Church LBC Bite Size. Good to see you today. We're going to continue with the Ten Commandments and so we're on commandment number nine. We find that in Exodus 20 verse 16. It says, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. And so as we look at this, we're going to take it in a in a, a certain direction that may seem like it's drifting up a little bit. It may seem like, oh, this is like a cousin or a, a brother, a relative of this commandment. But I, I think we will tie it all up at the end. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. And so if you look at the police today, they wear body cams. Why do they wear body cams? Because many people would say things about them, say they'd done certain things. And so they had many complaints against them. 90% of complaints stopped, a stat said in the newspaper a few years back, that 90% of complaints stopped when they started wearing body cams. And then you also have your doormen, your door supervisors, they wear body cams. Why? For their protection. Why? Because people say all sorts of things. People give false accusations. People give false witness statements body cam will show everything and so we take this straight away and we say how can we hold to the truth in this world why because a lie is of the devil a lie the devil is the father of lies when he speaks he speaks his native language Jesus though he says of himself I am the truth and so we want to walk in truth Matthew 12, 34 says, For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Genesis 3, verse 4. You see the whole story of Adam and Eve, and God speaks to Adam, Don't eat from any of these trees, or sorry, you can eat from all of these trees, but don't eat from that tree. You mustn't eat from that tree, okay? If you do, you're going to die. Well, the serpent comes along in its crafty way, the enemy and says to Eve, God never says if you eat from that tree, you will die. God says if you eat from that tree, you shall surely not die. And he throws just one word in extra. But that one word extra was a lie. So what the enemy said was a part truth. A part truth is part lie, which means the statement was a lie. That statement was the work of the devil. One drop of poison will poison the whole glass of water. James chapter 3, verse 6 to 10. I'm going to read it quickly for us. It says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the whole course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God, or in the likeness of God. Out of the sound mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. You see, the tongue is full of deadly poison. And so when we talk about being a, a good witness, when we talk about not being a false witness, not bringing false testimony against your neighbor, we're going to look straight at the tongue. And out of the tongue, we're going to take the first point, which is gossip. Gossip comes from our tongue. Gossip caused so much trouble among the brethren. Gossip caused so much trouble in this world. Gossip is no respecter of justice and gossip is nobody's friend. It is amazing how a gossip gives all the details without knowing the facts. That's one thing that I've learned. Gossips always give you all the details and yet they very rarely know all the facts. You know, when a conversation starts like this, I probably shouldn't say anything. That's the moment when you should say, don't say anything then. That's how a gossip usually starts their conversation. I probably shouldn't say anything. You know, who gossips with you will gossip about you. You must understand that. If they will sit and gossip with you, you need to understand that they will gossip against you or about you also. 
that one will be for sure i promise you exodus 23 verse 1 it says you shall not circulate false reports do not put your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness in other words as the niv would put it it says do not spread false reports very simple don't lie don't gossip you know a lot of time when we gossip it's never the full truth anyway proverbs 26 verse 20 where there is no wood the fire goes out and without a gossip a quarrel dies down where there is no wood the fire goes out what a great picture that we can stop quarrels you know when you gossip when you're speaking when you're continually talking about certain things and you know it's created a fire the more you talk about it the more wood you're adding to it stop talking about it there's no more wood being added James 1 26 it says if any of you think you are religious and you do not bridle his tongue or you do not keep your tongue under control you deceive your own heart and your religion is pointless that comes from the half brother of Jesus a quote that I wrote down was um, gossip is the devil's radio and I think that makes the point very good gossip is the devil's radio the second thing that can come from a man's tongue is slander Proverbs 10 verse 18 it says whoever spreads slander is a fool simple as that whoever spreads whoever spreads slander is a fool whoever insinuates something what does the word insinuate mean it means if you suggest something or if you hint at something you know that kind of if only you knew what i know about them you know those type of people if only you knew what they did in their last church if, if only you knew what i heard about them the other week that's someone that's insinuating that's someone that's you know giving you a bit of poison or giving you a little bit of a story but not telling you the whole so your imagination can run a wild that person just started the rotation of this word slander it started the wheels going the third point that i'd look at well you know actually before we look at the third point look at matthew 12 verse 36 it says every idle word and this is i want to get this across to us every idle word men may speak they will give an account of it in the day of judgment be aware of that every single word lies that's the third point that i'd make very quickly rather than give you scripture after scripture i'm going to give you some quotes on this that's not to say these are better than scripture it's just to get it in you every word of god is worth listening to i always say that so we're just mixing in scripture and some thoughts at the same time lies one quote that i read is one lies enough to question all truths i thought that might stick with one or two of you one lie is enough to question all truths another quote never argue with someone who believes their own lies i learned that I just don't even answer the phone to those people. If they, if they want to argue about lies that they're saying, but they've come to the place where they now believe them, there's just no point entertaining it. Big or small, lies are lies. Okay, big or small, lies are lies. Uh, flattery. Saying something to the face, but different behind their back. That's the fourth very simple point. Flattery comes from the tongue. You say something to their face, but behind their back, you say something different. You know it is two-facedness. But how many times do we see people flatter others? For what reason? There's always a hidden agenda. There's always a hidden reason. How do we hold to the truth, church? How do we hold to the truth? examine your heart and you need to refuse to gossip you need to refuse to sit in those circles you need to refuse that gossip it takes two to lie one to lie and one to listen it takes two to lie one person to say it the other one to listen 
So ask yourself these questions when somebody opens their mouth. Because we don't want to give a false witness. We don't want to bear false witness against our brethren, our brothers, our sisters. We don't want to be those men and women. So ask yourself this. The things that I'm listening to right now, or the things I'm about to say, does it help anybody to say it? Or does it help anybody to listen to it? The fabric of any healthy relationship is truth. Lies tear that fabric apart. If truth was a fabric, lies are going to tear it apart. So when lies come against you, and they will come against you people, you need to understand that lies come against us all. Don't worry, just hold fire. You need The Bible says, um, leave room for God to vindicate. Just leave room. And so if lies do come against you, because there's a great possibility that will happen. Remember this, many testified lies against Jesus. No amount of false witness could cancel his words though. Why? Because Jesus is the truth. And I'm going to leave you with this, John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. It says, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What's his word? He said, don't bear false witness. Don't lie against your brother. Don't slander your brother. Don't flatter them with one breath and say something different in the next breath. Be careful, church. Be careful with the tongue that we use. It's um, such a slippery place, that old tongue of ours. Be blessed. See you soon.